All right. All right. Going once. Going twice. All right. There's number eight, the sign of you over two. The sign of you over two. All right, everybody good with the sign? All right, there's the code sign then of you over two. All right, everybody good with the cosine? And then there's the tangent of u over 2. All right, everybody good with tangent of you over two. All right, there's 9A in which you use law of signs because it's angle side angle.
All right. Everybody good with 9A? And then there's 9B. Well, you got to use the law of cosines because it gave you all three sides. All right, if you do not have any questions, that ends the quarterly review. Don't forget, tomorrow, A students and virtual students will take it at 9.30. B students will take it after school. Okay. Um, it's 15 multiple choice questions. All right. And you cannot leave once you enter. All right, so let's start then the next set of notes. Dig -a -ding. Okay. So we got exponential and logarithmic functions. It's chapter three in your book. 3.1, exponential functions and their graphs. All right, by Monday, we will recognize and evaluate functions with base A. We'll graph exponential functions with base A. We will also recognize, evaluate, and graph functions with E. and then use exponential functions to model and solve real life problems. All right. First, we have to know what it is. The exponential function with f with base a is denoted by f of x equals a to the x, where a is greater than 0. a is not equal to 1, and x is any real number. And x is any real number. All right, so part one is evaluating functions. When we do so, we're simply going to plug in for the value of x, whatever it gives us. All right, so you replace the exponent with the indicated value of x. So if I do 2 to the negative 3.1, I'm going to have 0 0.117. Notice when we raise a number to a negative exponent, Provided that number is greater than 1, instead of increasing, it's actually going to decrease. C 
Same thing if we have a negative exponent. So if it's 2 to the negative x and replace x with pi, <clears throat> you'll notice once again the number is going to get smaller. All right. Anytime we have negative numbers, instead of getting bigger, it gets smaller. When we look at 0.6x raised to the 3 halves, we would get 0 0.465. When you're calculator, you just do 0 0.6, then the exponent button, then 3 divided by 2, or 1.5. When your base is between 0 and 1, instead of getting bigger, it also gets smaller. All right. And then the last one, 1.05 to the 2x, the value of x is 12. 2 times 12 would be 24. 1.05 to the 24th would be 3.225. That will come into play when we start dealing with exponential functions, with rate of increase and decrease, which we will most likely start on Monday. We're going to focus on graphing this week. All right. All right. So now we're going to graph. All right. Now we're going to graph. Graphing y equals a to, x to the x. This is what I expected first. In the very beginning, create a table of values with x with x value negative two negative one zero one two eventually we will get that down to negative one zero and one find corresponding y values you then plot the points and connect with an appropriate curve or not all of you are artists that's why we're going to plot the points as well All right. All right. So when you get this assignment, whether it's tomorrow or Friday, all right, when you get this assignment, when we create it, whether it's tomorrow or Friday, all right. Your values of x are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And you should be able to do the vast majority of this in your head. All right? You have to remember anything to the 0 power is 1. Is there anybody who has a question about that? Anything to the 0 power is 1. All right? 2 to the 1 would be 2. Is anything to the one power is the base? And then two squared would be four. All right, now when you start dealing with the negatives, so for example, two to the negative one, recall from algebra one and algebra two, a negative exponent is simply one over the positive. All right. So negative 1 will always just be the reciprocal of the base. In this case, 1 half. Same thing with negative 2. That would be 1 over 2 squared. 1 over 4. Anything to the negative 2 power is 1 over the number squared. All right, anything to the 2 power is 1 over the 2 squared. All right, any issues with that? Okay, so, okay, when we graph, just letting you know, eventually there's a couple things you're going to need. Number one is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the value of x when y is 0 ever since the days of y equals mx plus b. 
So zero one is your y intercept. Okay. Then you're going to have one, two. Not a big deal. Then you're going to have two, four. So there's two, four. Negative one is one half, so that's going to be about there. And negative two is one fourth. The component to that you need to know is you're getting closer and closer to the x axis. All right, which we'll bring in in a second. You know that from last year as an asymptote. And then just connect it with the curve. And then connect it with the curve. So just giving you a heads up, when you have a quiz on this, one thing you will need to give is the y-intercept. All right, zero, one. The other will be the equation of the asymptote. Remember, the asymptote is a line that your graph does not cross. Okay? In this case, all right, that would be y equals zero. All right, but we'll discuss more as we progress. Okay. Everybody good? So, 4 to the x, and this is the most efficient way of doing it. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And the 0 power is 1, and the 1 power is the number. 4 squared would be 16. Anything to the negative 1 is the reciprocal. Anything to the negative 2 is 1 over the base squared. So those are our five numbers. Again, all of which should be able to be done in your head. Okay. Because you're going all the way up to 16, because you're going all the way up to 16, you may, when you sketch your graph, realize that you may want to go up two instead of one. So that would be your scale. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right, and your scales don't need to be the same. You can make your x scale, scale on your x-axis 1 still. So 0, 1 is here. 1, 4 is there. 2, 16 is up there. Negative 1, 1 fourth. Negative 2, 1 sixteenth. If you want to visualize where those are, you don't physically have to graph them you got your table of values representing your points. You'll notice because the base is increased, all right, uh, it just goes up faster. But other than that, it has the same shape. Anytime, A, the base is greater than 1, all right, you will have that shape. Notice your y-intercept still 0, 1. All right, when there is no coefficient of A, we'll talk about it in a second, that will always be the case. And your asymptote, Y equals zero. If we do not have a number being added or subtracted, that will be the case. All right. Okay. Now... Introducing a to the negative x, and we will talk about the table function, the graphing calculator at a later date. So you got to do 2 to the negative x. All right. 
the negative does not affect the negative of the exponent does not affect the y intercept because the negative of zero is still zero. So two to the zero is still going to be one. All right, where it affects is the other values. For example, one, when I plug it in, would be two to the negative one, which is one half. And then when I plug in two, this would be two to the negative two, which is one fourth. It's basically just the reverse, all right, of the first graph we did. When I plug in negative one, the negative of negative one turns that into one, two to the one is two. When I plug in negative two, two to the negative of negative two becomes two squared, which is four. All right, so their roles just reverse. All right, zero, one, still there. One, one half is gonna be there. Two, one fourth is gonna be there. Negative one, two, it's gonna be up there. Negative two, four will be there. All right. Y intercept, no surprise there, zero, one. Asymptote, no surprise there, Y equals zero. What you are going to have to answer, though, is this question, and that is whether it's an increasing or decreasing function. So basically, as X approaches infinity, and then you're just going to have to answer F of X, and you answer whether it's increasing or decreasing. Because it's going down in value, that would be decreasing. All the other ones we've done this far are increasing. So those are basically the three things you're going to have to do outside of the regular graph. All right. Any questions thus far? Everybody's good? All right, so if we look at f of x equals 3 to the negative x, we look at f of x equals 3 to the negative x. All right, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 0 is 1. 1 would be 1 third, 2 would be 1 ninth. The negative of the negative turns it into 1, and then the 1 power is 3. The negative of the negative turns it into a positive 9. All right? When you graph it, if you don't want to include the negative over here, that's fine, because it doesn't go there. You're showing knowledge of where it crosses. All right? Negative 2, 9 up here. It doesn't need to be a perfect graph. All right? Negative 1, 3 is going to be down to here. Again, this is why you give a table of values. That way you don't have to be exact with your graph. Zero, one is there. One, one third, you visualize is getting smaller. Two, one ninth. So basically what we're looking for is enough to give us the shape of the graph. So eventually, that literally is going to be what you have to graph. That's all I need to say. Because that will give you enough information on your asymptotes. That will give you enough information on increasing and decreasing and the like. All right. Y intercept. Zero, one. All right. Asymptote. Y equals zero because we haven't introduced shifts yet. 
All right. And then as X approaches infinity, F of X decreases because it's going down. All right, so comparing the two, f of x, all right, parents of exponential graphs, domain, oh boy. Oh, here. All right. The domain is all real numbers. All right, the range, f of x is greater than greater than or equal to zero. The intercept, since there's nothing else there, is zero, one. The horizontal asymptote, y equals zero again, because there's no shift yet. As X approaches infinity, F of X approaches infinity as well. All right. When it's raised A to the negative X, but A is greater than one, still all real numbers. All right, because A is positive, still greater than zero. Because there's no shifts yet, still zero, one. The horizontal asymptote, Y equals zero or F of X equals zero. The only difference is as X approaches infinity, F of X decreases. All right, so it's a decreasing function. All right. Everybody good. All right, so now we're going to talk about the more complicated part, which is shifting. All right, f of x equals b plus a to the x plus c. All right. B is outside, ladies and gentlemen, so that's going to be a vertical shift up and down. All right. C which is in the exponent as being plus and minus, not multiplied, all right? That involves a horizontal shift, all right? And that, in case you don't remember from last year, is the opposite. All right, so B, like we said, is vertical. When it's positive, it's being shifted up. When it's negative, it's being shifted down. C is a horizontal shift. Positive means it's being shifted left. Negative means it's being shifted right. And finally, if a negative is placed in front of A, then it involves a reflection. R-E-F-L-E-C-T-I-O-N over the x-axis. It involves a reflection over the x-axis. All right. 
So if we're looking at g of x equals 3 to the x plus 1, the first thing you notice is where is it being added and subtracted? Is it inside the exponent or outside the exponent? Since it is inside the exponent, it is horizontal. The magnitude is 1, so it's 1 unit. And because it's positive, it's 1 unit left. All right, when you graph, all right, this is where the negative one, zero, one kicks in. You will always do the opposite of the exponent. The opposite of positive one is negative one. So we would take each of those and subtract one, negative two, negative one, and zero. All right, the reason being it would be negative two, Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. That would be 3 to the negative 1, which would be 1 third. When I plug in negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 3 to the 0 remains 1. And when I plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. All right. That way, when I graph negative 2 is the one-third, which is there. Negative one is the one, which is there. And then zero is the three, which is there. So there's my graph. So what is that affected? Well, obviously it's affected the y-intercept. All right, it's no longer zero, one, it's now zero, three. The asymptote is the same as well, has not changed because there's no vertical shift, and it is increasing to the right. All right. When we come back, so that would be B students tomorrow and then A students on Friday. We'll finish this up and set you up with the graph, the graphic assignment, which will be posted tomorrow and will be due on Monday at midnight. All right. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, all right, don't forget to study for your quarterly. B students, we'll see you tomorrow in class. Virtual students and A students, you will be taking your quarterly. All right. Have a good Stay day. Healthy, everybody. Be good. Thank you. Have a good day.